Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Multimedia Keyboard 500. I first saw this at CES about a year and a half ago in 2017 and it didn't show up at the 2018 show and I wasn't sure if it was ever going to exist, but now it does. And the reason why I was so uh, eager to try this thing out is that it has a physical keyboard here that you can type on but these keys also double as a trackpad. So you can see as I move my fingers across the keys here, uh, I've got a little mouse pointer that even supports some gesture controls here too, like pinch to zoom and some other stuff. So really kind of a neat little product here that a lot of people have been waiting for for a while. And we're going to take a look and see if this might be finally uh, the ultimate controller for your home theater PC or a conference room computer or something like that. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. It costs about $60. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before I uploaded it. So let's get into it and take a look and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, pretty lightweight. It's all plastic. It actually feels pretty decent for the price. I like the keys quite a bit. They're not any different than uh, some other devices you've probably used that look like this. They have a nice little click to them, a real nice physical feel. And what they've done is given you a couple of different options for using this. So I can use my finger here, for example, and just kind of tap on the keyboard without pushing a key. And that will uh, allow me to do a click. In fact, I can even do a right click here just by tapping two fingers down uh, on it as well. Uh, it seems to work better with Windows than it does on other platforms insofar as gestures are concerned. So one of the things that I can do here is uh, swipe up three fingers from the bottom and get my task list, for example. And I have a lot of the Windows 10 controls on here. Uh, things like pinch to zoom and some of the other gestures don't seem to work on my Mac, although I am able to use it as a uh, keyboard trackpad. It also worked fine on Android, but again, it doesn't have all the gesture controls. And I think the biggest one that doesn't work on other platforms is uh, the pinch to zoom with it. But the one gesture that did seem to work across platforms was a two finger scroll. So for example, I can uh, just scroll through this website here if I get my mouse on the right spot here, uh, just by moving my finger up and down. I did find that this tap to click thing is very sensitive. So even a light little tap on the keyboard is often enough to uh, trigger it and have it execute something that you may not want. I don't like tap to click ever, uh, and this is certainly another place where I don't like it. And unfortunately, I can't figure out a way to turn off tap to click. It seems like it is on by default and will stay on by default. Now, if you want to get more uh, detail in your scrolling, uh, there are also two mouse buttons built into the bottom here, and they're separated here by that little gap. Uh, so what I can do is uh, push down the button here and drag this window around, for example. So uh, that is a physical mouse click, which is partly why I would like to see maybe an option to disable the tap to click. And likewise, I can go over here and just hit the other mouse button to get my uh, right mouse button menu to pull up. So you do have a couple different options to use it. If you're dragging windows around and stuff, it's a lot easier to push the button down and use your thumb like so than it is to try to do a tap and then uh, drag it around. So they did think about some different use cases. I also like the fact that they integrated Control-Alt-Delete here with a single command. So I can go Function, Control over here, and that will pull up my uh, control alt delete menu on windows here so that was pretty cool so really kind of geared on the windows side but uh, usable on android and on the mac and i think if you've got you know like an android tv box this actually should work pretty decently i was able to use it across a room uh, with no big issues there now the only big deal breaker on this is that there is no backlight on this keyboard and they do make uh, a prior version of this that does have a backlight and uh, for something that you might use in a home theater environment, I thought that was a big letdown to not have that ability to uh, have a backlight to see it in the dark. So that was something that I hope they might improve in the future, maybe offer another version of it that does have that. Uh, it requires a dongle, so it doesn't work over Bluetooth. This is what it looks like. Uh, they also included an extension cable in the box. The range is pretty good, but you want to keep it clear. Uh, and the reason is, is that I found when I had it like stuffed behind my Mac over there, my iMac, it was not getting a consistent signal. So my mouse movements were a little off on it. So I think you'll want to uh, use that extension cable in your home theater environment, for example, just to keep it out from behind the TV for the best possible signal and the best possible uh, mouse movement as a result. So this is uh, required. It is not uh, using Bluetooth or anything like that. 
It does uh, get powered by two AAA batteries. You have to kind of pull off the uh, bottom panel here, which is a little tough to get into. You might want to use like a key or a coin or something just to pop it out. Uh, but once you get inside here, I'll show you where the batteries are. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you the inside of it. All right, so I finally got the back cover coaxed off of this thing and you can see it's got those two AAA batteries that are included. They say about eight months of battery life on the batteries. You'll probably get uh, somewhere close to that depending on what your usage is. Uh, there's also a little compartment to store the dongle, which is nice. I've got a lot of orphaned and missing dongles around the house, so it's good to be able to keep the right dongle with the right device. Uh, this USB port here is for firmware updates, which hopefully might come at some point to maybe fix that uh, tap to click thing for me, but uh, that is there, so you have that as an option. And uh, the case is easy to put back on uh, versus how hard it is to take off. Uh, and then you're good to go again with it. And one last thing to check out is the built-in sensitivity adjustment. It's always nice to see it on the hardware versus having to go into your control panel and poke around. Uh, so right now I've got it on its uh, low setting here and you can see it takes a lot of movement on the trackpad here to get that pointer to move just a little distance on screen. Uh, which gives me a lot more control and resolution. But if I want the mouse pointer to go faster, I can hit function F10, and that will crank it up a little bit here. And as we wait for the keyboard to catch up, you can see now uh, the mouse pointer is moving very, very quickly, and I don't need to move my finger as far to get it to move across screen. So if you're having trouble controlling things, uh, function F9 or function F10 will give you the ability to adjust it uh, very quickly and on the fly. Nice to see it baked into here. So I really like this keyboard quite a bit. I have long been in search of something like this, which is why I was so excited to see it at CES. I like how they've integrated the mouse function right into the keyboard. My biggest gripe though is that it is a little too sensitive on this tap to click. And it's funny is that uh, sometimes it feels like it's too sensitive, other times it feels like it's guessing correctly. So I'm hoping they can tweak the firmware a little bit just to prevent uh, these accidental clicks because I've been making quite a few of them as I've been playing with this. Uh, the other issue though, and I think this is going to pretend, potentially be a deal breaker for some home theater buffs out there, is that there is no backlight on this. So once your lights are out, it's hard to find the key you want to push because you're in the dark and there's no way to illuminate the keyboard from the device itself. Uh, they have done backlit keyboards, as I've mentioned, on prior generations of this product. So hopefully they will bring it to this one because I really like uh, the entire feature set here, uh, minus the fact there is no way to easily see it in the dark. So that's my wish list on this one. I think it's probably worth taking a look at if you want something compact. I've been using these large Logitech keyboards. This is their cheap one. It's about 20 bucks, and they have another one that costs a little more that is backlit. Uh, but if you want something smaller, I think this will work pretty nicely. I'm really quite pleased with how well the mouse function works on it, and it is a nice, comfortable keyboard to type on with your thumbs because it does fit nicely in the hand. So that's going to do it for the Multimedia Controller 500, and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.